Thank you. <clears throat> well, it's a, it's a delight and privilege to be here. And I would like to start with testicles. <laughs> Men who sleep five hours a night have significantly smaller testicles than those who sleep eight hours or more. In addition, men who routinely sleep five to six hours a night will have a level of testosterone, which is that of someone 10 years their senior. So a lack of sleep ages you by a decade in terms of that aspect, that critical aspect of wellness and virility. And we see equivalent impairments in female reproductive health caused by a lack of sleep. This is the best news that I have for you today. <laughs> um, from this point forward, it's only going to get worse. Rather than tell you about the wonderfully good things that happen when you get sleep, I'm going to tell you about the alarmingly bad things that happen when you don't get enough, both for the brain and for the body. Um, let me start with the brain and the functions of learning and memory. What we've discovered over the past 10 or so years is that you need sleep after learning to essentially hit the save button on those new memories so that you don't forget. So sleep essentially future proofs those facts within the brain. But recently we've discovered that you not only need sleep after learning, you also need sleep before learning. But now to actually prepare your brain I'm almost like a dry sponge ready to initially soak up new information. And without sleep, the memory circuits of the brain effectively become waterlogged, as it were, and you can't absorb new information. So here in this study, we decided to test the hypothesis that pulling the all-nighter was a good idea. How do you do that? Well, we took a group of healthy adults and we assign them to one of two experimental conditions, a sleep group and a sleep deprivation group. Now, the sleep group, they're going to get a full eight hours of shut-eye, but the deprivation group, we're going to keep them awake in the laboratory under full supervision. Um, there's no naps, there's no caffeine. It's miserable uh, for everyone included, us as well. And then the next day, we're going to place those participants inside an MRI scanner. And we're going to have them try and learn a whole list of new facts as we're taking snapshots of brain activity. And then we're going to test them to see how effective that learning has been. And that's what you're looking at here on the vertical axis, the amount of learning. So the higher up you are, the more that you learn. And when you put those two groups head to head, what you find is a quite significant 40% deficit in the ability of the brain to make new memories without sleep. And I think this should be frightening considering what we know is happening to sleep in our education populations right now. Just to frame this in context, it would be the difference between acing an exam and failing it miserably. And we've gone on to discover what goes wrong within your brain to produce these types of learning disabilities. There is a structure on the left and the right side of your brain called the hippocampus. And you can see it here in these sort of orange yellow colors. Think of the hippocampus like the informational inbox of your brain. It's very good at receiving new memory files and holding on to them. And when we looked at this structure in those people who'd had a full night of sleep here in green, we saw lots of healthy learning-related activity. Yet, in those people who were sleep-deprived, we actually couldn't find any significant signal whatsoever. It's almost as though sleep deprivation had shut down the memory inbox, and any new incoming files, they were just being bounced. You couldn't effectively commit new experiences to memory. Uh, thank you so much for the talk. It was actually very informative. Um, I have two questions for you. Number one, uh, I have a five-year-old, and then there's myself, right? So how much sleep should we be getting? Um, and number two, uh, 
is there any disadvantage of oversleeping? So let's say if I sleep 10 hours, 15 hours a day and in the day, yeah. like, is there any disadvantage of that? That's a, so great question. So firstly, recommendations for sleep, you can find them on the National Sleep Foundation website for all ages. For the average adult, the recommendation World Health Organization, eight hours, range seven to nine. Once human beings, the average human being, gets below seven hours of sleep, we can measure objective impairments. So people who say, I can survive on six hours of sleep, there's a problem with that, which is this. Your subjective sense of how well you think you're doing without sufficient sleep is a miserable predictor of objectively how you're doing without sufficient sleep. So it's, it's probably a little bit like a drunk driver at a bar. You know, they've had seven shots, they pick up their car keys and they say, I'm fine to drive. And your response is, no, I know that you think you're fine to drive, but trust me, objectively, you're not. The same is true for a lack of sleep. Your second question is fascinating. Um, can I sleep too much? Well, there are anecdotes of something called a sleep hangover, where you sort of oversleep, and then you feel worse almost. When you oversleep, it usually means that you're trying to sleep off a debt that you've lumbered yourself with. So if you could sleep past your alarm, if it didn't go off, then you're underslept because it's physiologically impossible to sleep too much if you're healthy. Thank you for the great talk. Um, you. Do you also have any information on how quickly people recover after they switch from a kind of short sleep uh, periods to kind of a more normal sleep, sleep period? Because you only mentioned kind of as a, one evidence was the DST change when we sleep one hour more kind of things get better in terms of um, cardiac problems. Yeah. But kind of, is it quick, the recovery as well, as quick as the downhill movement? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a great question. So different aspects of your brain and your body um, seem to come back online to a status of health with recovery sleep. And those temporal profiles are different based on, even within the immune system, for example, some components take longer to come back online than others. What I would note, however, is that you can never get back all that you've lost. This is another one of those myths with sleep. So um, sleep is not like the bank. You cannot accumulate a debt and then pay it off at a later point in time, which is what most of modern society does. Chronic short sleep during the week, then you binge at the weekend. It's what I call sleep bulimia. It's what is otherwise known as social jet lag. Now. And if I were to take you and deprive you of sleep for one single night, eight hours of lost sleep, and then I give you all of the sleep that you want for however many nights, and we keep recording you, your brain never recovers all of that lost eight hours. It will try to get back some of it. It will never get back all of it. Thank, Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.